Hello, everybody. Okay, so today is very exciting because Elon Musk is launching Starship for the third time. And, uh, you know, the full stack. So, yeah, it's a bit of a different flight plan today. He's planning on going out, and then when the Starship, when the actual spaceship gets over the Indian Ocean, I believe it is, he's going to do a deorbit burn and then bring it down in the Indian Ocean. It's a, a bit, bit more interesting. They're also going to do an in orbit. Um, uh, propellant transfer is one of the tests they want to do today that's when well, they it's a little bit of a misnomer because they are transferring propellant but they're doing it from two tanks within the same vehicle i think they're going to take some from the header tank it's it's going to be exciting and what we're obviously looking for here is for them to get further than they did last time ideally complete all their test objectives and bring it down in the indian ocean lots of interesting things going on here today and I am exceedingly excited. The thing about Starship that I think lots of people don't quite get is it's like it's like the the start of flight or the invention of the steam engine, basically, or you know, the, certainly the railroads. It fundamentally changes where we can go and what we can do, and that's why it excites me so much because it's a it's a real step change you know what i mean by that it's not what came before bears no relation to what will happen in the future if we get this capability of fully rapidly reusable access to space it just it, it changes everything and it's it is access to space it's not actually access to orbit once you're you know once you've if you can if you can access low earth orbit easily and reusably and all you have to do is put fuel in to achieve it then you can carry up fuel and you can refuel things and you can go to the moon and you can go to mars the truth is spacex's starship has really rubbish performance on its own outside of low earth orbit it more or less can't do it at all but what it can do is carry a meaningful amount of payload to orbit and if it can do that in a rapidly and fully reusable way then it can just refill a tanker and then refill itself and now it's a fully fueled space vehicle in low earth orbit which is the majority of the actual you know that's the majority of the work is is getting out of earth's gravity well so it becomes possible to go to the moon it becomes possible to go to mars even it's incredible the whole thing is totally mind-blowing and i really hope that in the near future we get to see the the uh the the capabilities of this system as it sort of comes online properly we already get a, a, a glimpse of it like a, a tiny little taster from the fact that the partially reusable falcon 9 has transformed access to low earth orbit starlink only possible because of spacex's falcon 9 without it it would be prohibitively expensive to put that much mass into low earth orbit and this was recorded it, i'm watching this over starlink it will the video will be uploaded over starlink starlink is great and it's just a just a taste of what's possible you also get a taste of what's possible from the fact that since spacex have been launching crew to uh, low earth orbit for the international space station and private missions they've launched 50 people in a handful of years and done eight well nine actually crewed missions to the international space station with nasa so and that's you know to say nothing of all the cargo resupply missions they've done i mean for nasa spacex has been an absolute godsend because i, I don't know if they'd be able to keep going without spacex certainly now they couldn't you know, it, it, they, SpaceX form an integral part of a large proportion of what NASA does. And certainly the, most, the more ambitious bits of what NASA does are all SpaceX. I'm excluding sort of ambitious science projects that, you know, $30 billion satellites to the sun and stuff. You know, not satellites, but you know, probes to the sun and, and the outer planets and things like that. I mean, th those kind of things, of course, NASA would just do on a $300 million disposable rocket. And it would be fine because they're just going to do the one in a decade. But that's the problem. That's not what, you know, it's not what the world... I mean, it's what science needs, sure. But it's not what we need in terms of actually industrializing and exploiting space 
and the, the possibilities that it holds for us. So there you go. That's why I'm excited. There was a bit of a question mark over wind, but so far so good. Rockets field is on the pad. That's it. That's it. <laughs> It's one of the most exciting things I ever watch on TV is these rocket launches. It's, um, really gets the pulse going. Yeah, they, they do seem to hold at 40 seconds more or less every time. They won't be able to do that if they're visiting a space station. No, nope, no, nope, they're not holding. Still ticking away. Oh, they're good for launch, oh my goodness. Okay. Come on, SpaceX. Come on. I do think it's beautiful. It's a beautiful rocket. You know, when they first did the like the first version, it looked a bit janky. But this, this is beautiful. Water deluge system. Oh, they've they've started the engines. It's lifted off. They are going. They are going. <laughs> there is no, no stopping the thing now. My God. Oh, that's something. You actually got a bit of a sense of how huge it was as it went through the clouds then. Wow, that thing picks up speed. Well, the good news is it's not blowing up the pad today. So that's a, a green tick on the, the first objective. Yeah, they've got all of the engines going. They seem, to have, they seem to have got the engine reliability to a much better place than, um, than you know, initially it was a bit, oh, but... Uh, Wowzer, they must be getting up to about the speed of sound now. Oh my god, some of these views are just mad. I think they might be using Starlink to actually keep a connection to the rocket. So I'm, I'm hoping we're going to get some good footage, like, almost all the way. Where's Max Q? Oh my god, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh, you know what? Shots of this thing going up are going to be all over the internet because that is amazing. So beautiful. 30 kilometers up. Right, so we're coming up to the hot staging point, which is obviously, I mean, staging is always a critical moment in any rocket flight. Right, hot staging is at around three minutes, apparently. Here we go. They're flown propellant into the, uh, into the ship's engines, I think. They are now. Oh! Oh wow. Oh wow. They've successfully done the hot stage. Can't see the booster. I think it's behind the Starship, but I think it has turned around successfully. Oh, there it is. Oh my God. <laughs> SpaceX is the bomb, man. How did they do this? How? How do they do it? Is it supposed to be rolling like that? Oh, this is this is the super heavy we're looking at this view from, I think. So yes, it probably was supposed to be doing that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> By the looks of things, both the ship and booster are in. Okay, that's interesting. It's. Uh, we're uh, only using the 
I'm not using any of the super heavy boosters engines at the moment. It's in space. I think it's coasting. Still going up a little bit, but it's rapidly running out of uh, velocity. And now it's coming back down. The ship, however, is powering away. You've got to remember, SpaceX does have previous when it comes to landing first stages, like a lot of previous, so they should know what they're doing with that. It's going to be in a meaningful amount of atmosphere, the, the lower stages, in about 30 kilometers time, by which point it will be going several times the speed of sound and will be experiencing a reasonably high amount of heating right on those engines. So SpaceX think it will be all right. I guess we'll find out. Starship is uh, just about to pass the 10,000 kilometers an hour speed mark at about an altitude of 134 kilometers, 135. Yeah, there we go. So the Super Heavy is, is in atmosphere now, at least some atmosphere. Probably be about another 20 kilometers down where the speed will stop going up. Good news is it didn't blow up. So whatever they did, oh, there you go. They obviously think they're in enough atmosphere to start using the grid fins. Fascinating to watch this. I'm so, so, oh, look at these views. Oh my God, the views. The clouds really add to the sense of speed. I mean, you know, oh, it's moving around a bit, isn't it? They've got some aerodynamics to deal with. Oh, that's interesting. It looked, looked like they had some trouble right there when it came to getting the, the landing burn engines lit. But you know, it's a learning process, right? You know. I mean, even in fully disposable form, this would be an incredibly capable rocket. If they can make it fully reusable, then it is a total game changer. Yeah, they're, they're, in, they're in uncharted territory. And that's the thing, it's an iterative process with SpaceX's uh, launches. They're always looking to try and push the envelope and, and learn more as to, you know, what they need to do in order to achieve all of their goals eventually. All right. Okay. They're just down to the three center engines now on the, on the Starship. It's really moving now. It's about, yep. It's about 500 kilometers an hour short of orbital velocity. So it will come back down no matter what. But, um, wowza, wow, that was an exciting nine minutes of my life, that was. <laughs> Nominal orbital insertion. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if the next one of these things has got Starlinks on it. Because, you know, you're going to orbit anyway. Why not? So, they've done most of the sort of coast phase tests, the in-orbit transfer of propellant between the header tank and the main tank, I believe it was, and also the opening and closing of the PEZ dispenser door for Starlink satellites, which I'm fairly confident are actually going to be on the next ship that launches would be my guess, we'll see. Depends how the deorbit burn goes, because of course if they actually put the Starship into proper orbit, they definitely want to be able to deorbit the thing. Starlink will be the first payload. The question is when, and they will put them, you know, they will put Starlinks on there as soon as they're confident that they'll actually be able to deploy them and it's worth doing. They're not just going to waste the Starlink satellites because, you know, if they're going to orbit, they might as well make use of it. Mm. This relight test is uh, going to be a fun one. I wonder if they'll be able to do that. Interesting. So the actual ship is going to decide whether to do the burn or not. So they're not doing the, the relight burn. Be interested to see 
if it actually manages to re-enter a bit though. At the moment, it's been sort of rolling, is that right? Rolling to the right? It seems to have been doing that this entire coast, so they're going to need to fix that, you know, when it gets into the atmosphere a bit. On the upside, there should be a little bit of atmosphere soon. Wow, you can just see those clouds going by. It's insane the speed it's going, isn't it? I mean, the clouds really help you to understand how fast this thing is is traveling. Many, many times faster than a bullet. It's um, It kind of gives you an idea as to what you're talking about. The fact that they've just acquired Signal in Mauritius and it left Florida, uh, sorry, it left Texas at, uh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, looks like they're, they're wiggling the flaps. I think that's bits of ice coming off the flaps. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like there's a fair amount of ice coming off, which is, you know, kind of standard. Right, so what I'm interested in here is when are they going to actually start getting enough atmosphere to for the flaps to give some control and, and null out that roll? Looks like they're, they're actually getting through the roll already, actually. And they're still technically in space. Although, of course, there is a tiny bit of atmosphere up there. Oh wow. Oh wow. Okay, so now they are definitely in the atmosphere. Oh my god, you can re you really get an idea as to how fast this thing's going, don't you? So just past 100 kilometers and there's already enough atmosphere for it to be glowing like that. Oh, this is just absolutely mental. It does seem very much like it's going sideways. Whoa, look at this. How controlled is it? That's what I want to know. <laughs> it's going to melt the camera, which wouldn't surprise me. This is the most incredible footage. Oh, that's interesting. So they're at 82 kilometers and they're already pulling speed out of it. Because obviously as it's falling, it'd be picking up speed, but that balances against the air resistance that the, the vehicle is experiencing. So the fact that the speed is coming down now rather than continuing to go up gives you an idea as to how much air resistance it's meeting. The fact that they managed to keep telemetry down to 65 kilometers is quite impressive. All right, so we don't know if the thing survived yet, but in about three minutes, it should be going suborbital. So, you know, sub subsonic. Yeah, my, my guess is it went boom. Don't know why, but hopefully SpaceX have got loads of good data they can pour over and, and try and get to the bottom of it. Yeah, amazing. All right, I'm gonna call it. I think, I think Starship broke apart in the upper atmosphere. But it did start re-entering, which is something it has never done before. That was amazing. It is 
ridiculous how far SpaceX have come in the last 22 years. It really is. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. And I am a bit speechless. And I'm now going to watch it all over again because that was amazing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video and found it fun and interesting as I did. And uh, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already because that really helps the channel out. And I hope to see you again in the next episode of my vlog. Bye.